Inside Six Yards is proudly supported by 1951 Goalkeeper Coaching. For more information, you can visit their website at 1951goalkeepercoaching.com.au or you can find them on Facebook or Instagram at 1951goalkeepercoaching. Links are in the description below. Hey everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Inside Six Yarns. I'm your host, Yatesy, and with me, as always, the one and only... Mr. Tommy Garn. Yes, yes. Look, it's really, really good to be back, isn't it, Tommy? (sighs) I miss the studio. I miss the the lights. So have I. I miss the the big TV. I miss screwing up everything. (laughs) Missed your parents. Yes. (laughs) 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 Uh, But look... On a the on back. a different note, I just want to pause football, pause goalkeeping, pause inside six yards. <laughs> on the drive here, mate, it was hectic. And hectic? I'm not going to use any naughty language because obviously we're a we're a PG we are. G station and we want to keep it family friendly. But if the parents were on the road or the kids were on, the road, they could understand. But driving to your place today on Row High was a nightmare. Yeah, why? Why was, was, it, was there not, an accident? There was or? no accidents. There was just, just a lot of nothing. Drivers. No, yeah, like no, <laughs> no traffic works. No nothing. Just a straight road. If you want to turn left, get in your left lane early. Uh, and we, uh, I just, yeah, just Perth drivers. It is, but yeah, that's as is. a Perth driver, I don't. You feel like it's an insult to you. Eh? It is, yeah. and I've I've driven in Melbourne and seen how with the hook turn in Melbourne. Hey, if you want to. Turn right, you go in the left lane. It, it, it's weird. But they don't have many accidents that we know of. But then mm-hmm. here, we seem to have a straight road on Quinana Freeway or Row Highway, and we always seem to have <laughs> bloody Traffic. car accidents. Yeah. it's And I hope, yeah, you know, no good. one's been injured or I hope everyone's okay. But still, yeah. I just... Traffic sucks. Oh, Everyone hates traffic. I don't... I just don't get it. Yeah. No, no, I definitely... Yeah, don't like the... Well, like for me, like when I go to training and stuff, when I... Oh, like I, I go straight from work to training because the traffic's so bad. Mm. So like, there's no point in me going home because by the time I get home, I'd have to leave. So you, it's like you'd go row and then honky tonk. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So tonk and highway people playing home honky yeah. tonk, tonk and highway. We go. <laughs> Aussie slang. Yeah, like <laughs> for all, for all of our French listeners. Yes, which we'll talk about <laughs> that later on, Tommy. Don't you worry about that, young man. Um, but yeah, like I, I just because every everyone like I bring football back. Everyone has, you know, done your away trips, home trips. You know, mm. everyone travels to training and all that. Saturday, Sunday are games. And, you know, you do get the odd uh, Yanship or Geraldton or yeah, um, yeah. Southwest Phoenix and all, you know, all, yeah, all the, those type of teams. The odd drive that's yeah. going to, yeah, it's going to take a while. But it, sometimes if you go, especially, I guess, on, well, with the night series too at the moment, there's probably a lot of people traveling. Yeah. Um, it's just, you really have to plan, yeah. Plan your trip there because a potential uh, twenty-minute drive on a Saturday or a Sunday could take you an an hour sometimes. Yeah, man. It's and it's also it, it's bad. It's bad as well. Like you, you don't want to be that guy that's late in the change rooms. Oh no, there's you, hefty you, fines for being late. Exactly, and literally, like yeah, it just just the week past, had a game on the Saturday, and there was four of us. So we were supposed to be at you know. In the change rooms, ready to go at, I think it was 10 o'clock. And there was four of us in the change rooms Jeez, at 10 o'clock. You might have to go up front there, Tommy. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like there's going to be some fines today, boys. And, yeah, and everyone starts rocking in. And I'm like, and then as as predicted, you know, the, the coach comes out and goes, guys, that's not acceptable. You know, yeah. like, and, and, it's, and it's right. You know, like you need to plan your trips early. If I'm, if I'm there and, you know, I've got a family, mm. you know, and, you I've work. Got, uh, and work and other commitments. If mm. I'm there, there's no reason why somebody else shouldn't be there. And, and like, I get it if something happens, you know, if you, there's an accident or yeah. potentially. Um, but, you know, when there's that many people, it's like, you mm. know, not all of you guys have got yeah. into bad traffic. Do, do you think, though, on, on that note, we'll take another a route to the side there. You know, um, do, do you think, though, because it's pre-season... Do you think some of the boys are a bit more lax because of that? Yeah, potentially. You know, when you think of preseason friendlies and you, you maybe not taking it as, as seriously as mm. you probably should. Um, but then again, it, it's it's also a habit. I think you know, 
And I think preseason is the the time to really set the tone for the team. Mm, I and agree. I believe that that is the preseason is quite important to not only just gel with like the new members of the team. You know, you get new players bringing in. You know, you know potentially new coaches. You're bringing in, you know, a lot of different styles, and you and you want to get more time together. You want to get, um, you want to set the tempo, and you want to mm. set the right attitude from the get go. And, ev- and everyone needs to adopt, you know, and especially if if you've got a team that wants to win, and you've got a team that wants to to be successful in a league, mm. yeah, all have to be on the same page, and that's you know, and that starts with the little things like you know, making sure everyone rocks up to training, yeah. we're on time. You know, when we're doing stre- we're doing the right things, the warm ups, the stretches. You know, them little mm. things all come together to, you know, eventually equate to good, good, good days, good training, good mm. games, good season, and that's what well, that's it. it it's a flow on effect. You, and the thing is, when when you're playing at that in in the state level that we St- are at state the moment, level, yeah. You know, you you're setting a pre pre of 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 amateurs and oh, don't oh, don't forget too. You have the under 18. So the under 18s, yes, yeah. you know, you're playing resis or first, well, first team they look look up to in the resis, but yeah. that's where they want to be. And if they see the 18s, uh, so the 18s see the resis rocking up, you know, late and yeah. late to training, it really, um, I guess, underlining kind of sets the tempo of, of what they're going to do. So if we're all rocking up on time, looking a million bucks, you know, black pants, polo top, it, yeah. And yeah. The track, also, the track suit that seems track to be the, 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 the popular thing these days. And I, I don't like the track suit. Yeah, see, I'm... I'm Not a fan? Yeah, so, well, all right. So, 18th, mm-hmm. de- I, I guess it depending what league you're in, but still, like, I think definitely, regardless, you should be wearing black pants, dress shoes, yeah. and your club polo. Yeah, I, know that's, I know it's been hot in the, in our pre-seasons. Mm. Um, I think last Saturday was like what thirty seven, wasn't it? But even then, like wearing trackies is probably same as well, yeah. tracksuit bottoms is probably the same as wearing mm. you know track you know business pants. Yeah. But I just like. I just like the look. It looks professional when you rock up to a club and you see everyone dressed in professional gear. Yeah, it it is intimidating, and there is that that kind of mental. Yeah, I, I agree. Factor to I, it. I agree. Yeah, I can understand that. I, I find the tracksuit a bit more comfortable. And I think that's probably where it. It's led to <laughs> yeah. the, the comfortable side of things, and I, I also think that it's it's the multi use type of thing. But there's, there's yeah, I, yeah, it's just the, I think the way the youth's gone. I think mm. type of thing. Yeah, but agree. yeah, you, you, uh, look, you look at some of those photos of it's like today's gangsters, and they're wearing baggy pants, <laughs> and it's like before gangsters, and they're all wearing pinstripe suits, which oh. I'd like, by the way. Yeah. Anyway, let's reel it all back. Reel into, it all back. Reel into, it all back from, from Yates' pinstripe suit. Yeah, yeah and from my. <laughs> my whinge about traffic mm. um look it's been <laughs> a very interesting do we say we say month with everything that's going on yeah it's it, look you probably would have seen our other videos and um, that we posted it was it was impossible for us to get into the studio um we had a week of lockdown mm. um you know we, we released a bit of a few videos of us doing our running that we uh <laughs> I wasn't a big fan of, especially huh. with that mask on. It was oh, it's hectic. That was yeah, yeah. So I actually had a proper mask, but you had like a like a. a it's called a head sock. He- is uh, that what it's, called? it's called a head sock. It's multi-purpose. Um, you can obviously wear it as a bandana. You can it. I don't even. I think I had it because it was fishing, so you can you know put it over your mouth and it just stops the UV rays and stuff like. That. But it right. It was a bit easy to breathe through, but um. Me being a bit of a clean freak and uh, loving the smell of Dettol. I actually washed mine in Dettol. Okay. And let's just so, say the smell stuck in there. So I was so you running just... around inhaling Dettol. <laughs> if that's good or bad, I'll let you know soon. Oh, it might, may, just... might um, cure the coronavirus yeah, by Donald it, it, Trump. Who knows? Yeah, you were just sitting there like, well, and then I woke up an hour later. <laughs> yeah. With no pants on running yeah. around High Wycombe. Yeah. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was de- definitely definitely a struggle, but it you know it's it's those doing those things, getting out in you know, allocated time for an hour for exercise, really makes a difference. Um, and we we actually our our football club at Curtin, um, we all had to post what we did so our um, coach can see, yeah. and also too like a bit of banter among the boys, mm. um, like pick up your game mate, or yeah. You know, like, yeah. So I think I did, I think I did six point one k's. I think on the Monday. That's the good thing about being a keeper, though, because like anything's good. Yeah, oh, yeah. And then I did. Nobody's going to be like, "That's a 
terrible time on the three yeah. k run, they'd be like, you know, you know, when is the keeper going to run three run k's? Yeah. And, Here's know. the thing though: the the trick, the trick is, and it's going to be a cheeky plug to you like this one. So you can run around doing your exercise, like do your your six point eight k's, which are yeah. Like, yeah. Um, listen to your music, to your hip hop, and all your your bing bang, all that type of music, <laughs> or what I recommend is you listen to a podcast, e.g. ours. There you go. Or another podcast, which I won't mention, which was I was listening to. Because um, that one there goes for, you know, potentially goes for 45 minutes to an hour. A similar time you know, frame to our episodes. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you can lis- listen to that while you're running. And it's, yeah. it, it just keeps your mind active and it kind of makes you forget that you are going through hell. <laughs> yes, and you can hardly read. I'm big. I'm a big fan of listening to either music or something when mm. you're when you're running, and it it makes such a difference, doesn't it? Oh yeah, because I think with the music, the tempo, depending what you listen to. Like I know, um, Tommy, you love Justin Bieber, so his <laughs> tempo with his music, you know, it kind of goes up and down, and it only goes for three minutes, and he says one word. Yeah. But um, <laughs> you know, it it doesn't. It's a bit hard because when the song stops, you're like, oh, the song stopped. Then you go, what am I doing? I'm running. Oh, this hurts. And the next song comes like, oh, here we go. Is it but too if you late li- now to say sorry? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sorry, Justin. But yeah. Of course he listens to this and uh, we'll probably get an angry message. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think that's, for me, I think it's a little hack, a little trick. Just listen to a few um, few podcasts while you're running because it, it does distract you. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I think it's a great idea. Just make sure you're safe and look left, look right. Um, with traffic and keep an ear out for in- on uh, incoming cars. Yes, that is a yeah. That's, that's definitely, <laughs> yeah, definitely, gotta be careful definitely, of that. Definitely something to be wary of. But I like the time. Like t- the the lockdown obviously wasn't great, but it served a purpose. We did it, and it was good for the good for WA, mm. and we got through it pretty quickly. How good was it though? That didn't interfere with any of the games. Yeah, that was. We the, could still play football. Which yeah, is, like, like we didn't get didn't get trained, but we still got to play football. Yeah, I, I like the fact that it was awesome. And then, like, I for me personally though, it gave me a bit of time to reflect and then kind mm. of sit down and go, okay, all right, something's not quite right. Like you know, I I had a bit of a off preseason, you know, massive coaching changes, team changes, and, and all of a sudden, you know, it's when you get to a point where it's like it feels like a brand it is it's a brand new team essentially you know but you're yeah. same you're at the same club similar faces some some similar faces but you know and you get to a point where okay and i didn't start the season very well i had a few first team games um I got given the opportunity to you know play you know a bit more first team football yeah. uh, didn't play too great if i'm honest and uh it, it just it gave me the the time to reflect and go okay why have i not been playing well okay maybe my you know, set up mat or my, my, my pre-match, um, you know, routine wasn't, you know, I didn't do my usual pre-match mm. stuff. Uh, I'm a little bit overweight than I normally am. Uh, motivation's a bit lacking, you know, just stuff like that. And you kind of just go, okay, all right, let's set off a few personal things to side and let's create some challenges and let's get focused and, you know, mm. get back to, you know. Do you, uh, do you find that you got yourself in a bit of a, um, a rut, but, you kind of get a bit lax because a, a, you a little bit, yeah. I, you get stuck in this routine, yeah. So yeah, it, it's to a point where it's, you know you're going back to the same club, and you know this time last year, I didn't know if I was going to be, I didn't know where I was going to be. Mm. I was at Dynella, but then I was also kind of floating a little bit between different clubs because um, you know I hadn't really found my proper place yet, yeah. Um, and I hadn't signed a contract or anything like that. While as this year. I've already signed a contract with Dinella. So I know I'm where I'm set for the season. You're there, you're done. So yeah. the motivation was, wasn't was as much because I was training so hard last year before preseason. Mm. I was training so hard to get myself in a better shape, to play well, to, you know, basically put my best foot forward no matter where I went. Mm. Um, but yeah, this season, a little bit more lax because, yeah, I was like, yeah, I've got nothing to prove realistically because i was like i've already signed my con I've, I've already signed you know the coaches or the coach uh, bobby bobby desotowski he knows me knows what i'm capable of that's why he signed me again uh and then you know it was just like sweet i got nothing to prove now uh, but that was the wrong attitude for me mm. it was like you, you you're only as good as your last performance really mm. in, in my head so you know and it, but mind you, it works both ways. You know, if you have a bad performance, it doesn't make you a bad keeper. Because no, everyone's going to have a bad day, aren't they? Correct. 
Um, but you need to approach it the right way and be like, okay, you may not have anything to prove, but you still need to go out there and put your best foot forward and put the hard work in and go out there and put in a good performance. Yeah. And I didn't really do that. And um, after a bit of, you know, self-reflection, then I had uh, the next game after that was, after the lockdown was the the Ron, uh, the Ron the Rod Banjic uh, Memorial, yeah. Memorial Cup, Cup game. I didn't get a chance to play in the first team game, but I played in the Rezies game. Played really well. Um, you know, wasn't, I don't recall making too many mistakes per se, um, made a lot of saves, uh, and came out for a crosses, which was a big thing for me. So like just mm. getting that confidence back up, claiming balls, uh, making saves, keeping us in the game. And then we won four, three, I think yeah. it was in that game. So like the saves came in handy. I thought that was quite good what they did that game with the, with, so obviously the, uh, the Dinella state reserves team, they played and they had the resis for the yeah so we talk us through what happened there yeah so we played so there was two games um there was so the dinella resis played against the forest field amateurs team yeah, which is the um, div div one amateurs. div one amateurs yeah. and then the forest uh, then and the dinella first team played against the forest field uh first team state mm-hmm. league uh state league one side which is funny because majority well it's not funny but majority of those boys that played for Forestfield and obviously Dinella. Yeah. Had Rod had a very, very big impact on the majority yeah. of all of their lives. Yeah. If it, um, so it was an awesome, awesome event. I know it was a good turnout, good for the club. Um, and seeing some of those photos, um, especially of Tezza. Yeah. And and yeah. Rod's and Rod's wife. Yeah. Um, it was yeah, it, it was brought really a bit good. of a tear to my eye. Yeah, it was so a bit heartwarming really nice. towards mm. the end, yeah, and definitely uh, I've worked very closely with Terry last season um, and I uh, absolutely love the guy, mm. um, you know, heart of gold. Um, and yeah, definitely, definitely a, a good friend as well. So like, oh, yeah, yeah. Terry, Terry's a good guy. So um, yeah, to see him get a bit emotional is, is yeah, he gets a bit upset and, and, and that's the, but that's the impact that Rod had. And mm. um, definitely, uh, I definitely miss, miss him. Oh, uh, he brought oh, me yeah. down to Dinella and, it, it, it's definitely taken a different path Dinella has um, since he's left. Um, but the goal has always remained the same. Mm. And that is to, you know, to get better, to get game promotion. And um, yeah, definitely the, the the team's up for that this season. Mm. And, and that's good. And that's what you want, isn't it? Yeah. And I think for us, um, definitely that's an achievable goal. Um, it's just a matter of, for us at the moment, is getting us 90 minutes fit. And that's our problem. Mm. So like last... So just skipping a few weeks ahead now, the last week just gone has been the night series. So we're mm. both currently in the night series at the moment. In um, the same league, if you've been listening. Yeah, we're actually in the same group. So, um, but unfortunately for both me and Yatesy, we are both not starting at the moment mm. with the first team. Um, so, which is a bit frustrating, um, but all all good. You know, we're, we're happy to, to fight for our spots. Um, which means we could if we ever have to go and we can just warm each other up exactly <laughs> quite yeah. um, opposition goalkeepers warming each other yeah, up yeah that would be weird <laughs> uh, uh, it'd be weird when me, when me and Yates are both sitting on the bench next to each other watching the first team <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, or even if we do get to the stage of you know we do both play reserves and we actually verse each other in the, in the yeah. resi that'd be quite good yeah that uh, do, are you pl- do you know if you're playing that game the resi's game for because Curtin have arranged a Resi's game. Well, I'm, I'm at this stage. I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing that maybe, I am. Maybe. Yeah. Well, I might have to. Might have to try and make that game because I don't think I can at the moment. But I can rejig a few things. Yeah, that'd be, be that'd be good. <laughs> but yeah, mm. so and the state league kicked off last weekend. Yes. And um, it was a pretty good start for us. You know, we started the game really well. We played about, I'd say we played about maybe 60 minutes of the game. The first 45, we finished 2-0 up at halftime. Bad, and then and then it kind of fell apart around that 60-minute mark. Just a bit unfit. Uh, shape kind of fell apart a bit. And then all of a sudden, we were conceding goals. And then all of a sudden, we lost 3-2 in that game. So it was a big comeback from UWA and credit where credit was due. Mm. They took their opportunities, which we didn't. That was the biggest point yeah. of the game for it, us. It's a big... um. I think that 60 to 70 minute mark in a game of football really makes or breaks teams. Um, yeah. And it, even if you're nil all or you're one nil up or, mm. you know, 
it really, if the other team's got grit and determination and that fitness, yep. um, it can really, that time is, I guess, almost as good as a golden goal. You know, it can turn a game around. And I think that is when you look to your bench and to have quality on the bench. Mm. That's the most, so especially when you get to that 60, 70 minute marker, the legs are starting to get tired for the players that aren't uh, as fit because of the stage of the season, still preseason. Mm. That's when you look at them players and you go, okay, cool. They were playing great for 60, 70 minutes, but now they're starting to tire. So let's get them off and then let's get some fresh legs on to make a fresh impact. Mm. And having that quality on the bench to come on and make an impact in the game, that's really important. Mm. Let's throw on a Ben Teke and yeah. score, <laughs> score, in the, um, score in the 94th nine, minute yeah. for Crystal Palace. What a goal. That was. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Let's, as a goal. But as a keeper, though. <laughs> as a oh, keeper. my God. Yeah. Uh, that would hurt. That was really, really 94th hurt. minute. You're sitting on a draw and you're like. You'd be happy. You'd happy to take the point. You, you'll take a point, you know. Yeah. It's not great. You'd rather three points, but you do take a point. And then all of a sudden, that point just goes bye bye. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and like, I think both teams were happy to, for where they are in the ladder to take a point. Yeah, Crystal yeah. Palace even more happy to take three. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, Tommy, I think after all that, so the night series, it's been look, it's been interesting. The first rounds, I know there's probably been a few upsets and a few, um, well, a few score lines that you think would be. Um, yeah, there was there was definitely a few results that were. I was like, okay, that's. Good. Interesting. Yeah. Um, but how did you? I, I don't know how you guys went. How, uh, we did you play? we played Frio. So that's uh, a that, Frio that's too. a tough squad. Yeah, very um, very good side. Uh, we went down five one. Right. Um, so look, a, a, a big scoreline, but just does it reflect the game though? Was the game it's, like because when people say five one, yeah. they're going to go okay, that's a t- that's a tanking. But it's was a it hard really? one because in the first, I would say. 30 minutes i think three goals oh no two goals were scored oh, right. three goals, yeah so one, one was a penalty wasn't a penalty where i was sitting no um but look you know I've, i'm not a referee so yeah and i think once that penalty went in um in the first half that definitely did change the tempo but look I, i've got to give credit when credit's due uh noah who plays for frio who got yep. signed up this year just to he's a quality player yeah um just it's like a gazelle on ice skates, just amazing. Just gracefully, you know, <laughs> goes through everything and the pace and the finishing. It just made it look really easy. And that's uh, and that's the thing about this channel as well. Like the, we we are goalkeepers, but we appreciate good players and good strikers. Oh, you know, definitely. like we're more than happy to you know lift up the head, put the gloves together, and be like, "Good shot, man." Mm. You know, like it's it's not a you know it's not about like you know potentially goalkeepers versus strikers or anything like that mm. we're not we're not really about that it's you know we love goalkeeping that's what we do and by all means when every time the ball hits the back of the net a, pe- a little piece inside me dies mm. <laughs> yeah. i feel that yeah but yeah. then yeah you know but uh, uh, there is moments where you do go do you know what that's just class mm. you know and you, you just go well played all right i'll give you credit where credit's due but all right back to it yeah you know? let's go well Let's speaking of credit. Yeah, well, <laughs> why don't we have a little break, have a little freshen up, yes. visit the powder room, yep. have a have a beverage, put, and put some makeup on. I think you should run that ad, young man. All right, let's do it. Inside Six Yarns is proudly supported by SD Leisure for all your goalkeeping needs without breaking the bank. SDL provides quality goalkeeper products, including goalkeeper gloves, game day and training tops, full kits, including matching shirt, shorts and socks, three quarter pants and even padded compression shorts. For more information, you can visit their website at sdleisure.com.au or you can find them on Facebook or Instagram at sdleisure. SDL, it's all about you, the goalkeeper. Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that little cheeky little ad break there. Oh yes, gotta love STL. You do. Um, well, are we wearing? I've, am I wearing? I don't know. I don't know if you. Are you? Are uh, we, I've. We've got STL on somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> we, 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 Stu doesn't know this, but we've actually cheeky done away. But no, no I think. Uh, <laughs> which hopefully is in the pipeline. Who knows? He's maybe. done socks. What's next? Socks maybe. and jocks. Maybe some, yeah. maybe some, maybe we're going to do some, maybe some special gloves or something. I don't know. Oh, who maybe, knows? Maybe. Who knows? Who cheeky, knows? cheeky hint. Cheeky yes. hint. Well, all speaking right. of uh, apparel and all that type of stuff. Yes. 
Tommy, do your magic and <laughs> whip up the new copers. The copers. The Ooh. new copers. So I think these copers have been out for maybe just under a month now. Um, Tommy's going to work his good, magic. Good, 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 okay. Good. So if you're yeah, watching here on YouTube, here they are. The Copa Sense. If you are listening to us one. as well, feel yes. free to head over head over to the YouTube channel, which by the way, 400 subscribers. Yeah, yeah. We finally hit it. So finally. happy. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Like, can you good. believe 400 people listen to us? No. <laughs> I swear you paid them or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I know. Right? I like, if I was going to pay for subscribers, though, I'd, I'd pay for a lot more. <laughs> Well, they are expensive, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's yes, a lot are. of beer. That's yeah, exactly. But we've got the copers up right now. Yes. So these are the new cope. The, what they called the copers Copa sense sense point one. So I, what I don't understand with with Adidas and all their boots and that stuff, they go nineteen, they go twenty, and all that type of stuff. And then but they go back. We're going back to one. We're going back to one. We're going back to number old. one. So, but when, when I think about the number one copers, I think about the old school. Copers, the original OG Copers. Yeah, the, 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 the black Mon- and white. Mondeo. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. that's what that's what I think of a Copa. Yeah, yeah. Um, so these look, yeah, they look mint. sexy. So these ones here come in retail Australian at two hundred and seventy dollars. Um, if you are an after pay, you can get four interest free payments for sixty seven dollars and fifty cents. If so only we were sponsored by Afterpay. Huh? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Because their yeah. stock markets are going pretty good at the moment. There you um, go. <laughs> so these ones here are the ones that the Hale wears. Um, they also did, did come that, in, is he is he wearing these copies? He's now? wearing the new ones now. Ah, um, so they sneaky. come in your firm ground and your soft ground as well. So they're with the metal screw ins with with four of them. Um, so these are the, obviously the firm. Ground yeah, the version. firm ground, which is really funny because like we, we mentioned this before, how hard it is to get metal cleats in um, or studs in Australia, but they always seem to market here in Australia these firm ground boots, and it is true. You know, we we do play on kind of firmer ground. Oh, look at this! It's just um, oh. that gold. But you know what I'd really like though? Yeah. If that gold was a metallic red. Oh, metallic no, red. That maybe that's might come next. Who knows? Hopefully, Adas is listening. <laughs> um, but they are they are a good boot. They it, just they look, look just really good. Just suit the, the silky smooth lines, yeah. and you know that you you know when somebody puts copa on a boot, you know you you're pretty much looking at You've a comf- a comfortable yeah. uh, kangaroo leather boot, mm-hmm. um, and it's usually good for wide feet as well, which is you know great for goalkeepers. Most of us are like have wide feet, um, but let's let's have a look at some of the yeah the designs. Can we? Bit of info, bit of specifications. Let's okay. look at some of these. So we've got was it kangaroo leather? Yeah, that's what we thought. Yeah, F- fusion, kangaroo. fusion skin leather. Up. I think that's the one up. It's a new, new improved kangaroo leather. Right. Pretty much, I okay. think. Um, Molded sock liner, um, lace closure, regular fit, K leather f- forefoot, kangaroo leather forefoot. Um, that's interesting. I do like yeah. I, I do like the laces side of things, but let's have let's have a look. So let at yeah, so bring up the next one, Tommy. Ooh. All right. So these ones are the Copa Sense Plus. All right. These one will set you back four hundred smackaroonies Australian dollars, and they also come in the in all black. black. Oh, now we're talking. So you're looking at, at for my this is my type of maths here, Tommy. Yeah. After pay are doing your four interest free payments for a hundred dollars. That's that's my type of math. That's easy to work out. But look, just just yeah. look at look at that though. That is so. These ones have no laces um, for the for the viewers that are listening in the car. So no laces. Um, look, they look <laughs> they look they really look, really good. Man, they look I prefer good. the all black than the than the gold hill. Mm. Um, so let's look at more of the all black then. Yeah, the all look black just looks clean. Yeah, it's, yeah, definitely. I love a clean black boot. Oh, that's just very yeah. no- that's just naughty. Very naughty. So they've gone with the if you go back to the last one, sorry, yeah, Tommy. Yeah. yeah. You look at the heel there. So see it's kind of got that like uh mesh thing at the back there. Yeah, so this um, this all uh, that listen Yeah, because the predator here. ones have that elf type of thing coming up at the heel. Remember it came a lot higher last time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've they've kept the same type of style of the boot there. Um okay. but look, it looks looks incredible. Um, notice too, with on the right hand side with the other boot, there was only eight and nine size left. 
Yeah. And this one here is seven to thirteen. Yeah, so I can imagine a lot of people are more happy to pay the two seventy than the four hundred. Yeah. Um, which is fair enough. And let's let's see if we can look at some of more of these specifications. Yeah. But it seems to be the similar type of that's the thing, Tommy. Look at that. It's pretty much exactly the only thing is you've got this snug added as prime knit collar. Yeah. Um, which is what we're referring to the heel and where your foot goes in, so to speak. Yeah. Um, it's it's pretty much everything's the same minus the, the shoelaces. So basically they take away the laces and they charge you an extra $130. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to take these laces away for you yeah. and we're going to charge you another, what, 100 and. Hundred and thirty uh, bucks, is it? Yeah, that's Whoa. wow. That's that's a lot of money. Like, it, I'm, I'm more impri- surprised I actually got the math right there. Yeah, mate. That's I know. I'm that's so, so happy for you. My math teacher be so happy for you. <laughs> so, but look, they're a great boot, and the the cool thing about the football boots is there's always something new coming out. Yeah, look, always something new. There's like these big brands are always reinventing, mm-hmm. um, and sometimes potentially too much. You know, it, you know, it, it's it is always good to you know we always love, you know, newer and better and lighter and all that type yeah. of stuff. But th- that's the thing is like, but Copa's that the Copa Mondeo is still one of the best selling boots. Yeah, I guess you just well because how long have they kept it for? Yeah, but like that, I think when you buy when you buy a Copa, yeah, you you know what you're gonna get. You you know, yeah. You know you're going to get a good boot that's going to last possibly two seasons. Yeah, you for know? sure. Um, with these newer boots, unfortunately, we don't have the luxury of getting paid millions of dollars um, <laughs> and getting new boots every day or <laughs> every week when they start fraying. Yeah. But, um, I wouldn't actually be surprised if some AFL players wear these boots, to be honest, being the feel that you get in the I boot. would definitely say, yeah, the point one versions, definitely. Yeah. I would see we with laces on. Notice how the heel goes up with the top. Sorry, the the pointy bit of the toe kind of flares up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm, so it's so look, just I'll just bring this up again sorry. so you guys can see. But you might want to move that. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah. So just so just the, this little pointy bit how it arcs up a little bit off the off the ground, which is it just very yeah, very look. It, they look amazing though. Like, sleek. Very sleek. Very sexy. It would look very good if someone had to wear an all black kit. Like myself, yeah, mm, and very definitely think they should do an all black version in the in the yeah. lace no, laces I reckon, version. I reckon that gold bit needs to be fluorescent, like a a metallic red. A metallic red would a be metallic mint, red, wouldn't so it? That would just be killer. That would be mint. That'd that be yeah, cool. like not just a normal like a metallic red. Yeah, or yeah. or it came with like a metallic orange or a metallic. Um, Purple or you know just these type of metallic metallic colors. Yeah, yeah, I do agree. That would look mint. The gold looks. It looks good. It looks classic. That's what it looks like. It's it's a very cool, funky, swervy type of boot, and um, I think it'll be very popular this season as well. So Adidas have done well here. So they've gone for an all black boot, and obviously when you pay your four hundred smackers, you can get the all black one. But they've done the gold there, and it's not. Too much gold. It's, it's not subtle. Too much, not too much. I, I like flair. it. I like it. It's subtle. Yeah. But you still get the the feel of the all black boot essentially, just with a little bit of gold on the back. I actually really like it. A little bit of summer something, you know. Yeah, a little, a little bit of summer something. A little bit of how you doing? Yeah. You know. <laughs> I, I, I could just picture. I can see a goalkeeper in that. I can oh, see yeah. uh, a defender with little little for Danza dancing with their feet there, <laughs> um, or just a solid number six there in the middle. You know. Yeah. Uh, that's the good thing about copers, man. They they will. You could pretty much picture them on any per- pe- person that laces up a pair of boots, essentially. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. You know, you, yeah, it's just the, the comfort on the Copa, like you mentioned before, it's just unreal. Yeah. Um, it's like, just a na- like a, you don't, it doesn't take much to break them in. Mm. You know what I mean? Like kangaroo leather. And, and, I, and I will normally go for Copas. That, that is my, that's my mm. boot. That's my go-to boot. Uh, and this is the first season that I haven't gone with Copas and I've just tailored away to, just for something different mm. in in Mizuno's, and I'll tell you what though, Mizuno is definitely giving like Copas and mm. Adidas a run for their money, man. Obviously, the price tag is the biggest problem that Mizuno has because they are expensive, and but mm. so do top of the range Adidas boots as well. well so that's it. you're looking at four hundred smackers. For yeah, that. yeah. So for the other one. Yeah, so I would. 
I would say like a, yeah, definitely. And yeah, just a nice boot looks quite good. And it'd be interesting to see the comfort on the newer ones as well to make sure they've kept the same qualities. I, I think that would though, yeah. because with, with it, the boot with that legacy, it has been known for its comfort. Yeah, you have um, and it's fit. You have to respect the the foundations of the boot mm. and just, yeah, yeah, definitely you, you can't take the step backwards in certain areas. It'd be a hard thing, you think, with the designers with these boots because they obviously have a template of what they need to work with. Correct. And there's only there's only so much you can dress up a pig, isn't there? Because you've got to say the original Copers, they don't, they're not the best looking, you know. It's, they're just a classic boot. They're, they're just, just, a, just, just a classic, black and white. ordinary, you know, black boot, white stripes, mm. you know, big tongue. Yeah. Oh, you've got to love it. And best thing with, with what Adidas do with that big tongue and I've seen somebody do it. actually get um, their mum to stitch those elastic things so they can put the tongue over the boot like yeah. the old Adidas the old, the, old, did. the old Predators, yeah. the old Beckham oh. style, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's naughty. It. All right. Speaking of naughtiness and all things amazing, Tommy, do your magic again, mate, and Ooh. let's pull up this save of the week. Save of the week. So we actually know this, this girl, uh, Morgan, Morgan, Morgan Aquino. So this is from, uh, see, I'll pull up a clip here, do, 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 V. Um, so this is a clip from a Brisbane Raw game. Yeah, this is round one. This is save of the week from the women's A-League from Brisbane Raw. Yeah, and this is a, this is our debut, yeah? I'm pretty sure, yes. Yeah. So, so just, just, just so everyone, just pause it so, Tommy. Yeah, sorry. Bro. Just so everyone knows, right? Okay. So this young lady here is a Perth girl. Yeah. And... Her father, or Fajah, on side sports. Caesar? Duh. That's a... Okay. All right. So I'm pretty 100% sure. Um, look, she... Um, good on her. It's amazing that she's out there. Yeah, nice. Um, and to reach this level too. Well, I remember she was at Glory last season, wasn't she? Yes. And she did quite well there when yeah. she was called upon as well. So um, I've seen... Because I think it, they... I think it was the WA team, state team... Yeah. I think they played the Perth Glory, the women's, and they were, it was done at the uh, Forest Field. Okay, so yeah. it was good to see that, um, mm. see them down there as well. But um, look, it, it's right. awesome to kind of know know of this person and know this person, yeah, and, and then see something like this. So this is Fox Sports, by the way. So everywhere, let's go, Tommy. Let's play yeah, this. Let's safe. go. Right, let's go. I'll make sure there's no sound. But yeah, so here we go. So it's a shot. That's a good save. Very good save. Penalty spot shot. Keeper's right. Great reaction, low, low to her right, and she's got a nice palm to uh, parry that off to her right out for a corner. Good kit too. Nice kit. Yellow. Don't mind the kit at all. What boots do you reckon she's wearing though? I don't know. It's, you go. It's, you probably won't be able to get it. It's a, it's a hard one. Because they're all black though, and that's the hard thing where I'm – if they're the new Copers, I'd laugh. I don't. Yeah, you can't really get no, a good can't view. see. You really can't. So she's anyone, definitely got all sport um, yeah, gloves, gloves on. I'm pretty sure she's sponsored by all sport. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Well, if any listeners out there know what boot she's wearing, please let us know. I got lost where the camera so, was for so, a second. There. So this is this is the oh this is the frame that we've got. That's hard. That's uh I don't know. It, there's it, looks, no, it looks a bit like a Copa. It does look or, like a, or, a Mizuno. Nah. Maybe I don't know because it's got kind of it looks like silvery at the top of it, but no other. What other boot is all black? Like I know there's probably a few out there, but it's not an Asics Lethal. It's a Gel Lethal. Sorry, it's not. A, it's yeah, not a it's Vapor. Yeah. Don't well, know. speaking, of, there's Copers right there. Yeah, that look. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there's your speaking copers. of the traditional Copers, right yeah. over here, the Copers. Look at that. Is. Can't go wrong. Cannot go wrong. Nah. And you know what? They still sit at retail. I think it's like 270 bucks. Yeah, man. And people will pay it. Yeah. I'd, well, I'd, I'd pay that for those boots. Yeah. Because they're just comfortable. They're simple. And they do the job. Uh, yeah. And they last. They last as well. Yeah. They, I they- know there's a guy on my team, um, Carlo. He wears the Copas. And they, they've they obviously been, been through a bit, but he's had them for quite a while. Yeah. Um, they're just, just a trusty boot. And is, and that's the good thing, like to have a pair of boots that you trust is is very oh, definitely impo- very important. Also, to the I, I think too with the style of football you play and the player you are and what position you are, I think a boot does determine 
kind of where you play and what you do with those type of boots I find. Yeah. Because you wouldn't have, like, f- for us as a goalkeeper, we wouldn't really want a light, um, like a vapor or mm. um, a nemesis or something like that, not a nemesis, because they're really light boots and there's nothing much to them. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, yeah. I think we've all, like, I think it's such a goalkeeper thing, though. You just have mm. like a, like a simple boot and, yeah, just really just one of them things that you just, you, you, you're like a, a comfortable, simple boot. Um, usually it's a, a simple color, like a black. So you don't, because you know they're going to get muddy and stuff. Mm. So you're like, I don't have to clean it as much. They'll they'll look they'll look all right. Yeah. You know, and, and you don't want to be that keeper with the bright yellow boots uh, flying around everywhere. Yeah, you type kn- of thing. Because you know you're going to have a cheeky center four that's going to go straight through you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Speaking about people that we know. We've yes. got let just bring that photo up, Tommy, again. Oh. Do your magic. We got the man, the myth, the legend. I love I love the fact uh, that he's back at back at Rocky, mate. That it's is it's awesome. good to see him back in an SDL that kit. Photo. Yeah. Um and uh it's good to see him back. Didn't they get a clean sheet as well? They won two nil? I to be, I can't I I'm gonna say yes. I'm not quite uh, sure. So I didn't get actually a chance to see any of the previews or or any of the scores of this. I think so. Rockingham won two nil. Who did they play? Do you know? I can't remember. Look at that blue. Kit. If it's a blue, oh, blue kit. So it's not Sorrent- Sorrento aren't that blue, are they? Potentially not Perth because Perth don't do. Nah, it's, yeah, it could be. It could be a Sorrento. <laughs> it could be a. Sorrento. Oh, look at that, Luke Gates liked it. Funny that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, look, it's it's yeah. great. It's, it's it's great to see it. It's, it's good. Awesome. To, it's good to see um, Cyril having having a bit of fun. You know, yeah. getting back, getting, getting back, doing what he does, and definitely we will have Cyril back on the show. Yes, before you know it. Yes, he will be back on the show. He, he's he's talked about how he wants to come back on. Yeah. We've had a chat to him, um, and he's all about coming back, which is awesome. Like we um, absolutely love the guy. Such a gentleman, isn't he? Such a gentleman. Such a gentleman. Uh, it's um, it's completely different on the park. You know what I mean? It's it's so funny because he's uh, well. You look at that photo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he he's a, he's a different animal on the park, mate. Mm. He is well and truly. Um, but yeah, it's just one of the things that yeah, you just you just love to appreciate, and um, you know, I just love that that the um the 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 kit because it's the the one of the one of the the original kits that SDL did with mm. the with the wings on the on the shoulder pads. I've got one of them. Yeah. yeah which is one of yellow. But it, it, ten years. Ten years and he's still wearing I love SDL I love gloves. the fact that he's yeah. still wearing SDL gloves. It's just Yeah. That's yeah, just mint. Just yeah. like a Copa. Last to test the loyalty time. loyalty is is a is a is a, is a strange thing in the glove yes, world. It, it is. is it is very strange. But you either, you either glove it or you don't glove oh, it. Yeah, mm-hmm. Gotta, lo- like that, gotta glove it, mate. Gotta yeah. glove it. Gotta glove it. <laughs> but All it, right. Yeah. Well, what are you doing here, Tony? You're just I'm actually, it. I'm actually just trying to pull up the score, the the NPL night series. There's got to be some sort of, um, some sort of night series results. Okay. Uh, and I'm sure we'll be able to find them on. <laughs> There's the, some weird stuff on this page. Here we go. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah, it was Coburn. Oh, Coburn, of okay. course. Yeah, two 0 I was right. So yeah, so rocking and beat uh, Coburn two 0 I'll just do a quick little verif- verification here. Yeah, there you go, everyone. So you can no, see. There's rocking. not many really big blowouts, is there? It's only Bayswater and Sorrento. Why has Sorrento got AUS for? Is there another Sorrento? I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, Balcata one 0 Inglewood. Yeah. It's a good comeback from Inglewood. So if mm. that ECU joined a lot two 0 up at half time, so it's a good comeback from them. Very normal. NPL scores though, really. If yeah. you think like this is a I night think, series, but then you look at the normal series, this is kind of the scoreline you look at. It's a good result from Armadale, to be honest. Mm. Uh, against Perth Soccer Club, very, you know, you know, one one. Solid. It's, yeah. it's a solid result. You would take that. Yeah. I'd take that against Perth mm. Italia. Oh, definitely. Italia so, I'd, yeah. I'd love to watch in the actually the highlights of all the games. I uh, know it'd be good to get when we get the old um the the highlights. Yeah, the highlights yeah. back. It, it will make for a little bit of um just a little bit of extra viewing for us. Yeah, it's good to watch that. Of, I quite Facebook enjoy it. scrolling, really. Yeah, and then kind of what you're doing at your lunchtime, or yeah, pretty much, yeah. mate. All right, so so Tommy, this we're gonna we're gonna wind it back for a while. Gonna uh, wind it back, back yeah. in time, back in time, back in time. Yeah. Well, actually, not too. Yeah, I wasn't born then, so <laughs> a, 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 little, a little bit while ago. 
Um, we're going to do a segment that we like to do and we'll just talk about um, goalkeepers, so bring, international goalkeepers. Bring them back, especially for younger listeners that mm. listen to the, po- the podcast or the channel. It's always good to hear about and, and learn about older goalkeepers that have been there and done that and accomplished a lot. Yeah. Exactly. It's, and it's, it's good for us as well, actually. It's, oh, yeah. it's good to look back through the history books as well and, and learn more about these keepers that I guess you may not have paid too much attention to when you were, when you were little, but you kind of did, you know, yeah. like, you know, like you, you kind of knew them, but you didn't really know them. Mm. You know but what I mean? For, for me, the keeper that we're talking about today, obviously I have a little bit of a soft spot for him. Yeah. Um, Cause he did play for a great team. Um, must but, be Manchester United yeah, then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I didn't choose him because of that. Um, I could just let everyone know. Sure. But um, yeah, like it, it, it's good to it's good to see these keepers um, to talk about them. Obviously, we we don't really go to full in depth with them. It would really really good if we could actually do an episode, you know, an hour episode on this on these goalkeepers because the information that's out there is amazing and the videos. You can talk. You can talk for hours. Really. Oh, exactly. Well, football you can talk about for hours anyway. So yeah, man. Yeah. You listen to our podcast, we can talk about football for <laughs> talk a about long Tommy's time. Can. Yeah. Is it solo or is it not solo? What's in the solo? What Who knows? What Why do it? I smell Is vodka? it a solo zero oh, maybe? Yeah. I don't know. What don't, do you know? Don't All I know yourself, is it's mate. in an inside six years. That's right. Stubby. That's it. We can confirm that rumor. We that can it confirm. Is. It is. And it's got the I6Y logo on the back. That's right. If you haven't, if you can't see that, go to our YouTube channel, have a look. And confirm. And while you're there, give it a like. Give it a, a like and subscribe. Up. Let it give us a comment. Give us an idea. Give us an idea for another segment on mm. the podcast, maybe on on a yeah. video, or just say good day. Yeah, that's we it. don't mind it. It's not gonna. The puppies aren't gonna get hurt. The we, puppies are fine. We read every comment and we also reply to every comment that's on a video. Yes. So. Um, and also personal messages too. So yeah, I think there was one before we were talking about something and Stu messaged me and corrected me on something. So we appreciate that. Yeah, we appreciate I you like that. correcting us. Mm. Mm. I get a lot. I'm not <laughs> So smart. do I as well. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's talk about this one goalkeeper here. So All right, who are we looking at? Yates? We. I'm going to try and look at the camera and my phone at the same time. So I'm going to go a bit cross eyed here. So we have got... Fabian Bartes. Bartes, okay. of course. All right. So the Classic reason why I chose this goalkeeper to talk about for a little bit is because Tommy, again, did his magic and found out the the viewers who majority listened to our channel, uh, which was very, very interesting. Um, now, this – oh, here we go. Tommy's going, so was it our top one? It was the second top. So obviously top. Our, our top listeners – at I, I will see if I can get a picture and I'll put it I'll put it somewhere, maybe over here, and I'll show you guys yeah. our listeners. But basically, um yeah, you know. we have yeah, a lot of Australian listeners. We we are an Australian podcast, but the second most viewers so surprising is France. Bonjour, bonjour Monsieur. Yeah. Uh, Je m'appelle Tommy Gunn. <laughs> So we probably embarrassed ourselves and said really bad. And now we have no French listeners anymore because yeah, the- they've turned up, deleted us and blocked us. Yeah, it was it was crazy. So, yeah, for some reason, yeah, when we're looking through the, the, the Spotify a- analytics and mm. stuff like that, yeah, apparently we have, uh, um, you know, it was at 30 something percent or something like that. Uh, yeah, I think it was around view- the 30s. Yeah. Viewership uh, in France. And that's it's that's interesting. All, it's awesome. It's it's actually awesome to know. And we even when we look through the list and all the different countries that people were listening to the podcast, it was mm. amazing. And we love the fact that we're reaching out to different parts of the world and um, we get to talk about and talk about what we love, mm. really. We're not really doing anything special, we don't think. It's just mm. Yeah. So yeah, if, if you guys enjoy it, that's all that's that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah. That, that's awesome. Keep 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 yourselves happy. That's it. Enjoyable. But uh, yeah, so more on uh, Mr. Bartes. I, so, will, I will just chuck up a little bit of a uh, okay. Wiki, Wiki, so, Wikipedia. So all, all this information that we've that I've got is from Wikipedia. Um, so it's, it's such a reliable screen. source. Oh, it's so good. Look at that photo there. All right. So Mr. Fabian Bartes, Bartes was yeah, born yeah. in June 28th. Let's just, 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 just to cop it off. Yeah. Is nicknamed Le Divine Chalve, which, which is, is the divine Paul one. That photo to the right explains it all. Um, so born in 1971. Just, just, just pull this puppy That's up. That's all right. Look at that. Why are you doing that? Um, so he, he was a former <laughs> professional goalkeeper. Um, and also, too, fun fact, which I actually didn't know, yeah. he was actually a, a racing driver as well. A racing driver? Yeah. So he. 
So he was a bit loopy then. He was. Well, yeah, it's <laughs> two loopy things. To yeah, do. goalkeeper and race car driver. So obviously yeah. loves the adrenaline rush. Exactly. So born in France. The interesting thing is his height as well. Exactly. We'll come to that, Tommy. Don't you worry. Yeah, that's. Um, I didn't know that. So the, the, he's probably one of the, uh, or majority of the keepers we talk about have done it all. Mm. So um, so he's played uh, both in France and England uh, with Marcel, Monaco, Manchester United, um, and Toulouse. I'm not a, Tommy, try and pronounce that one with a T. The T O U L O U S E over here. Oh, the oh, Toulouse. Toulouse. Uh, I want to say Toulouse, but it doesn't Toulouse? sound right. I know I got Marcel right. And if, you, if French viewers are listening, let us know. And we apologise. And we apologise for, for murdering your language. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and obviously, play for Man United. Um, at an international level, we represented France national team. Uh, they won the World Cup in 98. And Martial, don't forget. Martial and Monaco are both... Both big teams. Yeah. They're not small teams no. at and all. When we go to his career, it's very interesting how that plays out. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, World Cup, um, Euros 2000, um, and the 2003 Federation Cup there. So, look, he's he's done. He's reached the final in 2006, and then that's when he retired. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, this is when we go with his height. So, 1.8 meters or 5 foot 11. Wow. So, he was always known as a short goalkeeper. Yeah, that's – I didn't know he was below 6 foot. I mm. – I, yeah, I guess I'd, I'd never really thought of him as an under 6 foot keeper, but there you go. It's just because he's just so bold and big, and that's what he's known for. Yeah, he's a his presence. Mm. You know, like it's just one of them things that you you know you, you see somebody's presence, and you don't necessarily think mm. about. It's always interesting when you look at keepers' heights, and you think you know some keepers that are, are you know that are just more in in your face than other keepers, yeah. but then you realize that they're it's reverse psychology almost because they're not that big. Exactly. So they have to comp- compensate. If you like, yeah, I guess you could say that. Yeah. yeah. So um, so he's, he's we'll go over his, his career. You've got it out on the right hand side there. Your screen there. Yeah. So the team that we actually murdered, uh, Tusli, which I'll probably mess up again. Twenty six appearances. Yeah. Uh, Marcel one hundred and six. Monaco one hundred and forty three. Then he went to United. Uh, Ninety two appearances. Then he went back to Marcel on loan. Twenty okay. appearances. Then he obviously signed up uh, for two seasons there with Marcel. Yeah. And then um what's that last one there? FC Tommy? Nantes? Nantes, yeah. So is a French professional, yeah, French. Yeah. Yes, a, yeah. So look, he he he's obviously played in the UK and, and in France there. Um so I, just I love the fact that he's from the French national team from nineteen ninety four to two thousand and six. That's a that's a twelve years. Big, that's a big thing. Yeah. Twelve years you were uh involved in your your national team, yeah, that's, that's impressive. And but that and like people say, oh look, you know the World Cup's only every four years, but, but it does how you every think, year exactly you know, the, the, every team and every year a national exactly. team assembles for qualifiers yeah. for what, whatever it may be. But you think you could be an eighteen year old goalkeeper, yeah, and then the next World Cup you could be playing at your top of your level, yeah. You know what I mean? So that that it's it's, just, it's amazing it's to be crazy. that long. But yeah. this is where it actually comes into. Um, so he played uh, down at Marcel, obviously, um, for his first division debut. Mm. Um, he won, so keeping a clean sheet and a one-year victory over AC Milan in the final competition. In 1993, victory made him the youngest goalkeeper to win a Champions League until, uh, what's his name? Uh, Khalees, uh, gosh, this is embarrassing. Oh, Casillas. Casillas, that's it. Sorry. Casillas. Casillas, Khaleesi. Well, I'm not talking about Game of Thrones here. Yeah, uh, I which, was, I, when I was younger, I used to pronounce it Sassalas. Sassalas. I don't know why. Oh, you did but better yeah. than I did. Yeah, and it was um, like, nah, it's Casillas. I'm like, okay. Yeah, and then he did so in, in um, Casillas did it in 2000. So it's yeah. still, that's, you know, 1993 being the youngest goalkeeper to win the Champions League. It's awesome. That's pretty amazing. It's like, it's a, you think of the, the amount of pressure playing for a club like that on, you know, Oof. being so young. In a Champions League and playing AC Milan at that time, who, well, I guess they're kind of a powerhouse now, but back then in the early nineties, you know, late nineties, they were, they were up there. Yeah, they were sure. up there. Um, so obviously he's gone through. One thing that really interests me um, is he's obviously signed for Man United. 
Um, so yeah. Alex Ferguson was looking to someone to replace after Peter Schmeichel's left, you know. Yeah. You, you're leaving a big hole there. Yeah. Um, Mark Bosnich, another Australian. Yeah. Um, just I think he didn't really uh, – Ferguson didn't really see him as being a, a concrete player there. Um, so Bartes signed for £7.8 million in 2000. Okay. Right. Um so everyone, like his first season was, was amazing. Um, like that's, I remember watching a lot of videos um, and watching him play uh, yeah. was amazing. But one thing that I was very, very intrigued is, is so Bartes obviously had a great season. Then he came back for the ses- second season yeah, and he kind of got complacent taking risk. And this is, not necessarily taking risks, but how you said before, Tommy, how you can, um, yeah, get you know, you have a good season, sometimes, yeah, you can yeah. too see taking risks, um, doing things you shouldn't do, conceding lots of goals. It goes on here on Wikipedia about what happens here. Um, and there was a lot of controversy on why Alex Ferguson, Sir Alex Ferguson, sorry, didn't drop him. Um, but then he pretty much uh, picked up his toys, sorted himself out, and then, you know, became became a lot better you know, and sorted stuff out. Um, also too in here, if you, if you keep reading in it, it also says about um, with United about he liked to psych the opposition out. I love I love the the mind games. It, talk, it talks about, um, mm. you know, how he yeah, played mind games with penalties. So like he would stand next to the to the goal. Yeah. Well, there's one there. He's standing on the post. Yeah. And had to take it again because he wasn't – and then he ended up saving it. Yeah. Just I love – it is also one of them things where it's, you know, if you do too much mind games in a penalty or when the opposition takes a penalty and you don't save it, mm. it becomes a bit like, oh, why, you know, why, why did you do it? that for? Yeah. Yeah. And I've, and I've kind of done that before where, you know, you play a little bit of mind games, you dance about a little bit and then all of a sudden, you know, they end up scoring anyway, and it's like, okay, and it's like, what's the point of me doing all that? Yeah. So for me personally, I've adopted the the ladder now. I am very mellow with my with my penalty. I'm very, uh, you could say, composed or mm. very laid back. It's like if there's a penalty, I'm just like, sweet. I kind of walk up to the ball. I make sure that the ball is on the dot or touching the line. Sometimes I might move it just to see the striker's reaction. And that would be my mind game. But other than that, I'll take step backs. I'll stand in the middle and I'll mm. I'll look for my cues. Yeah, because you, yeah. you, you definitely think though with, with the level that, that um, Bartes is playing at, he, they would know what side they're going on. And I think that psyching out in that level would be, obviously there's a bit of commotion, something's going on and... These strikers are going, okay, there's a bit of stuff going on. I'm going back to my basic. Yeah. And that I'm always going to go left, almost going right. That's the way I took out of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was just really interesting to um, to read up about him, especially the Man United, what's going on there. Um, and just with a loan, we went to Marcel and all that type of stuff. So, you know, he's, he's been around for a bit. Um, yeah. So, Tommy, let's bring up this video of his saves. Yeah, so we're going to show you a bit of a... Uh, if you jump to... Bam, bam. I'll get this all sorted. But, yeah, we'll show you a bit of... Just some highlights from Bartes. It's five minutes, but we'll, we'll, we'll reduce it down a little bit. So, yeah. I'll get this up so you guys can have a little look. But, but yeah. Our mugs for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you got some younger footage. There we go. Look at that. So, this is a cup... Yeah, this would be good. Look at that shaved head, though. You definitely, yeah. Just seeing him in that that grey kit. That's mm. that's that's what the I iconic re- Man United kit. Yeah, yeah the grey Man United kit is. Oh, that's so brave. <laughs> A little bit dangerous too. With stuff oh, at first, there's nothing wrong with that. Yes. Ooh. Gotta love it. Oh, yeah, the old top end loves it. Have you noticed though? Majority of his saves. Look where he's standing. Yeah, he's almost he, six yard box. Yeah, he's yeah. off his line, cutting those angles down. Yeah, and that will be because he is a smaller keeper. Yeah, except five, for that five foot eleven. So, yeah, but then again, like you know, you have to play it. You have to play it. You know, 
sensible you mm. know, in that circumstance when he was on his line is because it's a header. So you want to give yourself a little bit more time. You know, so you, you yeah, you come back to the mm. come back to the, the line to give yourself more time to react to the header. And again, he closes the angle down very quickly there. Very good. It's awesome to see oh, like a penalty saves. Loves oh, a penalty yeah. save. I think he, he had he's got not a bad record for penalty saves. Yeah. Um it's actually one thing I was meant to research. Yeah. And I got excited about watching videos instead of <laughs> Yeah, as you do. So many penalty saves he's done. But he I I I've lost count how many already. There's just so many penalty saves. Majority of them are quite low too. Yeah. Well, that's an old footage. And look, look, he's, he's saving that from his six-yard line. Mm. So he's definitely, again, six-yard line. So he is not afraid to cut out his angles with the by staying off his line. And and that's like, good. Like you said there, Tommy, like because of his height, he's using that as an advantage. Oh, that's very good. Oh, I that's love that. Me. And that's an, an that's an also a, a talking point for younger keepers as well. Like, don't be afraid to come off your line and close down the angles. I know as a keeper, I'm never that high for them shots, oh. but for sure, I'm definitely not on my line. Mm. I'm usually in, I'm usually halfway in between, to be honest. I think you just have to be because you don't want to come off your line too far. Correct. But you, you, it needs to be tactful. You need to be careful. Yeah. yeah. So, but I guess that's. And that's so the you thing. Learn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's the thing. Like you, you love that. That was good. How, how Stand up strong. Yeah. Oof. Get there. Loves it. You know what it reminds me of? You know when you throw a ball to a cat and you see a cat just like jump yeah. up in the air and do it. That's yeah. what it reminds me of. It's yeah. Just that athleticism is amazing. Yeah. Oof. The reaction saves a lot of reaction stuff, mm. which is good. Yeah, and he's definitely brave with the one-on-ones as well. You have to be, don't you? Yeah. You, you, well, you, you, we know from experience, mm. if you don't go in 100%, you're going to get hurt uh, or, or you're going to come off second best and you're going to be regretting, <laughs> you know. Exactly. potentially you've done. But yeah, lots of good saves there, man. Mm. Lots of good it's saves. Good. And, and it's you, like you could walk, watch that stuff all day, man. Exactly. You really exactly. could. Uh, and if you'd like to like watch more, or you just Google Bartes on YouTube. It's, yeah, it's, there's it, heaps out there. There's lots, lots to react to and lots to have a look at. And it, and you know, there's a lot to learn from it as well. You can look at the positioning. You can look at the 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 start. The what should I say the 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 the, st- the starting position. You can look mm. at um, what his posture is as well. Uh, and it's it's always in, it's always interesting to mm. analyze them things as well. I think that you can do that, and sometimes it is a bit hard on the videos because, or even when you watch a live game because it follows the ball. Yeah. But if you get a chance to, and you ever do, go down and watch a live game and just watch a professional goalkeeper, just where he does, where he walks around, and what he does, because that essentially is where the game's going, what the goalkeeper does, and that's the best of the best what you're watching. And it's really good to take notes of it. Um, and if you're not sure and you want help or whatever, if you've got a goalkeeper, ask your goalkeeper, yeah. coach. Um, if not, and a little cheeky, uh, little, what do you what do you call it, little kicker there, 1951 yeah. goalkeeper coaching. Loves it. You know, go on their, their Instagram as on the ads that we put out there, their Facebook. They're always putting these little nice little videos up, some great techniques there. They've got, they've got. Videos on YouTube as well. Mm. So you can even find them on YouTube. And watch it. Yeah. yeah and there's lots of great stuff there. Who's, um, uh, um, I'm trying to think of the gentleman's name. MPL goalkeeper wears SDLs um, and is trained by um, McKaylee. McKaylee, who trained. Uh, McKaylee um, trained Murdoch? Him. Where does he play? MPL. Uh, MPL. Stocky guy. Top knot. Solidaris. That's the one. Sorry, mate. I always get your name wrong. I always forget it. But actually, he, he's in some of the videos there. And the tech, and it's really good watching his technique and his his style of goalkeeping. Yeah. Um, and I do believe, too, um, they had a special appearance on one of their videos, too, who we interviewed at the Goalkeeping Wars. I definitely know Nick. Was it Nick Stone was in one of them as Nick well. Nick Stone was on. But who else did we interview at the Goalkeeper Battles? Whoa. Famous Australian player played in... Uh, he was a goalkeeper for Australia. We had him on our show. Sorry, we, had, we interviewed him at the goalkeeper battles this year. I Love can't him. even remember his name. Who was it? 
Who was it? Can you remember his name? Are you trying to bob it off to me? Tony. Tony? Oh, Tony Franken. Yes. So he was in there. Was I he? Knew, I, yeah, there was a video on there and he was a little cheeky appearance there. So I didn't know Tony um, was in that. It, it's really good. So if you get a chance, jump on there, follow the links and descriptions that Tommy does all his magic and put it on there. Yeah. And and get on it, guys. And if you want a training session, uh, get on it as well. And look, if you want some some sweet ass kicks, um, gloves, socks, you and all that jazz, hit up SDL as well. All in the links in the description below, guys. Um, but apart from that, I've been Tommy Gun. Makes me hate And this has been Inside Six Yarns, guys. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you in the next one. You've been-